talk about eating disorders. And what is an eating disorder? We can talk about disordered eating, and disordered eating is the non-clinical experience of skipping lunch or eating too much during the holidays. We all do disordered eating. That's pretty typical. But a clinical eating disorder is when our disordered eating becomes severe and it becomes extremely problematic to our health, extremely problematic to our emotional well-being. And since this is a severe disturbance, we often find people with eating disorders have an immense preoccupation with their weight and engage in dangerous, either restrictive, purging, or binging behaviors. And what happens is this disorder takes control of them. They're not able to function or thrive. We know that some eating disorders are associated with some types of personalities. We know that, for instance, a person who's more perfectionistic and desires control is more likely to develop an eating disorder known as anorexia nervosa, versus an individual who's more impulsive is more likely to develop an eating disorder known as bulimia nervosa. We also know that there's a lot of learned behavior behind eating disorders. We know that if your family or your peers engage in an eating disorder, you're more likely to engage in one as well. And we know that there can be some genetic factors as well. Now, what might surprise you about eating disorders is when we think about all the possible clinical disorders, eating disorders are the ones linked to the highest levels of fatality. We often think about depression maybe as being linked to suicide, or maybe bipolar being linked to doing something impulsive that could lead to a fatality, or maybe schizophrenia, or maybe an addiction to a really potent drug. But despite all of those disorders being associated with fatalities, the number one clinical disorder associated with fatalities is anorexia nervosa. This is the one that kills the most people each year. And that's why it's important for us to talk about. This is a really serious clinical disorder and the most likely to result in death. So what is anorexia nervosa? Hopefully you're familiar with it. It's become very common in pop culture, but it's the idea that a really intense fear of gaining weight extremely intense fear to the point that one engages in dangerous food restrictions. This is the idea that they really limit their caloric intake, they limit their essential macro and micronutrients, they become deficient in lots of essential vitamins and minerals. Now what you might not know about anorexia nervosa is it doesn't just have to be restrictive, that you can have anorexia nervosa and engage in purging and binging. That tends to be a misconception in pop culture. We tend to think that's related to bulimia. It actually has to do in the DSM with what your body weight is and how severe your preoccupations are. Now what happens particularly in the purging in anorexia is an individual that once they do eat a little bit, they might purge that out through induced vomiting or laxatives or trying to run it off and trying to overexercise it. And so one thing that really sets anorexia apart from perhaps the other types of eating disorders is the really disturbed body image. And so what we mean by this is an individual with anorexia actually sees themselves differently than what others see them as. And so even when they become quite thin, even when their weight to height ratio becomes quite severely underweight, they look at themselves in the mirror and they don't perceive themselves that way. They actually see themselves as larger than they are. This is different from bulimia and different than the other disorders we're gonna talk about. And so what happens here is this is what is so forceful behind the disorder. They actually believe that they're not underweight. They actually believe they need to lose more. And of course, a lot of stuff that can make this worse is through lots of really Photoshopped images in the media, lots of really, really extreme versions of people in the media that may have an eating disorder themselves, but they're portrayed as healthy and normative. And we know that there's a lot of websites out there that are considered to be pro-ANA, that, that actually promote anorexia nervosa and encourage people to engage in these behaviors. And we know that tends to make the severity of this disorder worse. And so anorexia nervosa is the idea that you feel like you constantly have to be thinner even though you already are, and you engage in really, really, really restrictive behaviors. Now, why is this the most fatal clinical disorder of all? Well, because if you're not giving your body what it needs, your body's going to shut down and that can result in death. Some of the earlier things this can result in is things like hair loss. People's hair can actually start to fall out or they can actually grow little hair all over their body to try and keep them warm as they lose body fat. They can stop menstruating if they are a person who menstruates. Their bone health will start to decay. They'll have osteoporosis and their body will eat away at their bones. Eventually, if they get underweight enough, it'll put a lot of pressure on their cardiovascular system and they can be at a really elevated risk 
of heart attack and stroke. And eventually if they don't have enough of the essential nutrients their body needs, they can go into renal failure. This is when their organs start to shut down. And so this is the absolute most fatal. It's the absolute most dangerous. It often doesn't get the attention that it needs. And even in our textbook, it tends not to be in this chapter on the textbook. They put it in an earlier one that's less clinically focused. And eating disorders have historically gotten less focus than anxiety and depression more considered less of a problem, more of a teenage fascination. But this is not a teenage fascination. This is life or death. It is really important. Second type of eating disorder that you may also have heard about and be familiar with is bulimia nervosa. So bulimia nervosa has some common behaviors with anorexia nervosa. And particularly, it may include restriction, it may include binging, and it may include purging. But what it tends to focus on most is sort of the fluctuations between the binging and the purging. The difference between bulimia and anorexia is they may not have a skewed body image. They may be aware of what they look like in the mirror, and they may just not be satisfied with that. And it tends not to be relying on perfectionism. It tends to be more reliant on guilt and impulsivity. Someone with bulimia nervosa may be a person who doesn't like their current weight, but doesn't want to completely restrict their intake. And instead they binge a lot of food and binging is the idea you eat more food than what is typical or expected in one sitting. They binge a lot of food and feel very guilty about it and then they'll purge it. And depending on their purging mechanisms, it can cause a lot of different health problems. If a person is taking lots of laxatives, for instance, it can really strip a lot of the lining in their stomach and can really cause a lot of colon health problems. If they're doing induced vomiting, it can actually tear away the enamel in their teeth. And people with bulimia can actually lose a lot of teeth and have teeth fall out because of the repeated and induced vomiting. A lot of the predictors of bulimia are things associated with self-esteem issues and just not being content with one's body image. And what's really fascinating about bulimia, but very dangerous, is even short-term bulimia can be linked to death. And that's because intense vomiting is very violent. And the fluctuation between really, really heavy purging and really, really intense vomiting um, can cause a lot of strain on the heart. And it can also increase the chances of a heart attack. Now, a third type of eating disorder you may be less familiar with is orthorexia. This is not so preoccupied with weight or body image. Instead, orthorexia tends to be the preoccupation with clean eating or healthy eating or eating organically or eating in such an extreme way that you begin to limit your intake in a way that malnourishes you. And so this is the idea that you may become so obsessed with eating um, non-GMO, organic, free-range food that you begin to limit your intake and cut out certain things in your diet that you become malnourished because you're not getting the essential vitamins or minerals. It's this the idea that you become so fixated on eating one specific thing that your body suffers. There's some documented cases about this where an individual perhaps doesn't want to eat animal products and then they also discover perhaps they shouldn't eat vegetable products because they're killing the plant and so they reduce themselves down to only eating fruits so not a vegetarian but perhaps a fruititarian and they really struggle to get the exact uh, vitamins they need or there was a documented case where an individual only ate bean sprouts they sprouted on their counter at home and that just did provide the diversity in the nutrition enough that they could thrive Important to understand that orthorexia has to be when this comes and it's not due to other medical conditions such as allergies or other things you have to avoid such as being uh, celiac and it's not coming based on cultural traditions. So for instance, you may belong to a religious uh, group that doesn't eat certain types of products or doesn't eat certain types of products at a certain type of year and that may result in some tummy issues and some digestive problems but if you're doing it because you're observing a religious ritual, it wouldn't be considered orthorexia, according to the DSM. Other people might argue with that. And if you have medical conditions, let's say an allergy, where you can't eat certain types of things, or you have a digestive issue, or other health problems where you can't eat certain types of food, and you avoid them, that's not orthorexia. But it could lead to orthorexia if you start to avoid things, even the things you can eat, and you start to become excessively restrictive in your diet. Uh, because you're striving for this notion of clean eating or healthy eating. The problem with orthorexia is you do become malnourished and you become obsessed and preoccupied with it. You're constantly spending a lot of time in your day screening your food and reading all the ingredients and doing more than what's just leading a healthful life. You're really becoming over preoccupied. And the last eating disorder we're going to talk about is binge eating disorder. All of us can overindulge from time to time, but binge eating disorder is when someone repeatedly overindulges. And when they overindulge, they do it in a very rapid way. 
they're eating very quickly and they have a hard time putting the food down, putting the fork down. They, they really cannot seem to stop once they start. It's also combined with a lot of guilt and a lot of embarrassment where they feel really ashamed of what they do. So they might binge in private or in secret. And when they're binging, they're really eating larger portions than typical to the point that they become uncomfortably full. They can really feel that stomach distension where their tummy sort of expands. They don't understand when they are normally full, they eat till they are uncomfortably full until it hurts. And so this doesn't happen in just one instance or just around holidays. That has to be something that's done repeatedly and over a chronic time. And it has to be done in such a way that they feel they have no sense of control over it. They're not just indulging on their birthday or on a special feast day, for instance. Important to understand that binging disorder can be more complicated and harder to diagnose in kids who are growing. And that's because kids that are growing should be eating a calorie surplus because they need it to grow. And, uh, and it's okay in that sense. And so if they're just the hungry caterpillar trying to morph into a butterfly, it may not be binge eating disorder. And so this can be a bit more tricky. Um, we know that today in our society, not only do we have a lot of eating disorders and people who are struggling with anorexia and bulimia, we also have a lot of individuals who are struggling with obesity and they're struggling to become a more healthful weight. And so obesity is not necessarily a marker of binge eating disorder, but it can be. There's lots of individuals who are obese for other non-disordered related reasons. They might just be eating too much throughout the day and not necessarily binging in one session. So binge eating disorder is a special type of disordered eating.